hello there boys and girls welcome back for another exciting edition of the flipped classroom lecture series today we're going to continue with dna processes but we're going to focus primarily on dna uh, replication i know you said that you liked the other video but let's try it with studio lighting and see how you like this one so let's get on into it first things first we need to have a little bit of a deeper discussion about our dna so you got the structure of dna looks very much like this and on your DNA, right when you finished, you were putting like a five prime and a three prime on different ends. And some of you guys are probably like, well, what's up with that? So if you look at the sugars, you look at the carbons, you can see them here, the little carbons. There they are. Yeah, that's great. I love smart boards. You see the carbons, you see there's one, two, three, four, five carbons in the five carbon sugar. And the primes are for which carbon it is. So the uh, left side, you should have the five prime end pointing up like they're showing here, and the three prime end pretty much pointing down like they're showing uh, there. Now that actually makes a big difference with the way the DNA goes together. And you'll notice over here on this side, you can see that the, the DNA are upside down from each other. You have one end has the five prime end up and the three prime end down, while the other side has the three prime end up and the five prime end down. Remember, like I said before, in order for them to go together, they have to be flipper flopped or it won't work. Now that is very, very important when it comes to the process of DNA replication. Uh, it is a very complex process. This is what happens during S phase. You said, oh, the DNA gets replicated, the DNA is copied. Well, here it's going to get copied, so we're talking S phase, interphase. And again, this makes for enough DNA that you can have two cells, right? We want to have two cells, you've got to have double the DNA without double the DNA. Well, it's no good because you wouldn't be able to make two cells. Uh, so first you have this enzyme called helicase. Remember, if it has an ACE at the end, it's an enzyme. So here we have the enzyme DNA helicase that unwinds the DNA from the helix and it can only drive from the three prime end towards the five prime end like it says right there. And so here you can see it. If you look really closely and squint with one eye, you can maybe see that there's like this triangle that's representing DNA helicase, just cutting the hydrogen bonds. What this does is it actually activates and lowers that activation energy and it allows for those hydrogen bonds to break at ambient body temperature. They wouldn't normally, but it lets us do it without, you know, boiling your body or having a fever and destroying your other proteins. So very important. And it works in the three prime end going towards the five prime end. And then, going the opposite way, you have DNA polymerase. Again, as an ACE, it's another enzyme that lays down and actually writes the DNA polymer. So here you have it, and you can see it goes in the five prime to three prime direction. So it starts here, going five, and extends the three prime end. And you'll have another one that'll hop on the other side and can work backwards called primase, and it does the weirdness. But eventually, what you end up with is you get a copied set of DNA. So it goes through this process that we're showing right over here. You have uh, your DNA polymerase, and it's extending. It's called extension when you're writing the DNA, five prime to three prime. Again, DNA polymerase doing that. If there were happen to be an error, DNA polymerase does have some proofreading powers. And it goes kind of fast, so from time to time there are errors. As long as the error is corrected, then we'll have two perfect copies of the DNA. If the error is not corrected, we call that a mutation, and the DNA is changed. We'll talk more about mutations later. And so it keeps on going, it extends the DNA, extends the DNA, and eventually you're going to look like this. So from our one strand of DNA, we now have two strands of DNA. The new strand is made from the old strand, and the new strand here is made from the other half of that old strand. So this is called a semi-conservative process because we're conserving some of the old DNA. So what's interesting is every time the DNA replicates, scientists actually think that this is one of the reasons that we age and get older. Uh, yesterday, or the day before, we looked at the shape of those chromosomes. You may have noticed this part up here called the telomere. That's the section at the end of the DNA. It's on the tips of all four arms of the chromatids and chromosomes. And every time the DNA goes to replication, a little chunk of that gets lost. You probably noticed on the slide before that there's these gaps. If not, you know, rewind, look at it again. But these gaps have to get overwritten, and they always end up shortening the telomeres just a little bit. 
For that reason, your DNA can only replicate about 50 times or so before the telomeres have been all used up and the DNA is not good anymore. Which means your cells aren't good anymore. So this is one of the reasons why we talked about how adult cells and your somatic cells have a set limited lifetime. Well, here's why. It's because when they go through that replication, the telomeres get shorter and shorter and eventually the DNA will start to unravel and the cell won't work anymore. That, boys and girls, is process of DNA replication. You will be modeling this in the lab using helicase and DNA polymerase. That was pretty quick like last time, so don't forget to moodle in the doodle. See you next time. Thanks for watching.